guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is Friday, so we're gonna do a Fabric Friday. Luckily for you guys, this one will be quite quick because I already know what I'm gonna make. Yeah. Okay, let's get into it. So this week's fabric is another winter fabric. It is already getting quite cold in the UK. It's really weird because the sun is like shining, but it's like cold and my house is cold. So I'm looking at the winter fabrics. Don't worry, still gonna be making all the other stuff, but like now my eyes are on like coats, jackets, cardigans, all that good stuff. So that is what we're looking at today. And this is finally gonna get made into something. So let's talk about this fabric. So this fabric is a suede and yes, it's not the best to wear for like wet weather, but it is warm and I really want to use this. Like I bought this last year when I went to Paris and um, yeah, I knew I kind of knew what I wanted to make from it, but I didn't know how to make it. But I found a pattern that will help me with that. So I'm ready, I'm ready for this. So this is a gray suede. It is so soft, but it's not a real suede. I believe this is a faux suede because yeah, because it's got like the backing is like a nylon. So it's a little bit soft and it's kind of thick, which is nice, um, but it's really, really easy to sew up. It's not like sewing leather. Um, yes, when you make a hole in it, the hole kind of stays, but you don't see it as much because of the, the suede. So this should be really, really easy to sew up. And I think I can make a really, really cute item of clothing with this. And as you can see, there is a lot. So this is either called faux suede or suedette. I think that's how you say it. I don't know how you say it, but it's like suede it. And it's basically um, not real. It has the same characteristics though of real suede. Now, real suede is a type of leather. It is from like the underside of the uh, animal. So whereas like other, like normal leather is from the top side of the animal, which might be like tanned to make it that kind of like shine or like that leather look. The underside, which is like a soft like fur, is the bit that is used for suede. I'm not actually sure of the process to get it like that, but I do know that, um, that I think like the best suedes are like from like goats or like lambs and stuff. It's, it's very icky to think about like, where these type of fabrics come from. So that's why I'm quite happy to use like faux leather and faux suede. I prefer using faux suede, you get a lot more of it. It is cheaper, uh, more friendly to the animals and also uh, you get different colors, so many different colors. You, you get rolls and rolls of it. Like you're not gonna get this kind of suede, you know, if it's real suede it's, and it's way, way more expensive. So not really, not really trying to do that. So. so there's not really much else going on apart from this is a faux suede. It is like this kind of like light gray, which I really, really like. It feels amazing. I'm not gonna put it on because it is warm. Oh my gosh, it is so warm. But yeah, this is my suede. Let's talk about what I'm gonna do with it because I'm excited. When I got this suede, I wanted to make a like motorcycle jacket and have it like be like, quite short and like really cool. And last year, that was the thing. Everybody was wearing them. And autumn's coming up again. So I'm pretty sure we'll see all of that suede, 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 just as much as we'll see like all the tweed looking things and leather jackets will be out. And also those like cool big leather shearling coats every single year because they're warm and they look good. So that's what I was thinking of making, but the longer I've had this fabric and I keep going back to it, I think actually I think I want to make some sort of like duster style trench coat with it. But I like, I'm not an expert when it comes to sewing. I have no idea where to even start when it comes to a trench coat. I can make like a basic jacket, but all those like flaps and toggles, yeah, I don't want to try. I don't even want to try and figure that one out by myself. So I was just perusing through my uh, John Lewis the other day because they have uh, the really big John Lewis's have haberdasheries and there's one really close to me. So every now and then I'll just like wander through, you know, look at some trim, look at what fabrics they have. And um, I was looking in their pattern section. I haven't been in there in a while and I haven't picked up many patterns like this summer. So there was so many and like I really wanted to just go crazy. And maybe I'll do a pattern haul with you guys because I did buy a fair amount of patterns because it's always good to have like backups, you know, and 
stuff like that. I like to make things from scratch, but you know, sometimes I'm short on time and it's just easier to just follow a pattern. And sometimes I'm like, when I'm not on camera sewing for you guys, I'm mostly using patterns because it's just quicker. And for me, it is easier. But if you're a beginner and also you can't find the exact style that you like, it's good to be able to like do both. Um, and also like learning how to make patterns yourself, like actual pattern cutting is a lot more difficult because there's a lot of technical stuff, but I've got all the books and if I really want to do something myself, I know how to do it. So I can do it all three ways, but for ease, I stick with the patterns. And I found the perfect pattern for this. Oh, I'm so excited. Let me show you. This is what I'm going to make. I was looking for a duster coat and I was looking for simplicity and look what I bloody found. So this is a really, really cool duster pattern. Um, it is like, there are three different styles. You've got the long style, you've got like a mid-length style and then you've got this kind of like short style. They all have pockets. This, the pink one at the front has pockets at the front but then this one and this one both have pockets like as you would in an actual coat. It comes with a tie and it is basically perfect. There is nothing about this pattern that I would change uh, to make it like how I wanted. So I think for this gray one, I'm gonna go with this blue one here, which is kind of like the mid-length one. So it's kind of like very trenchy, but still like loose fitting, like a duster uh, coat is. And um, yeah, in the, in the suede, it should look like really nice. The best thing about suede or faux suede is that it doesn't fray, which means I don't have to finish the edges if I don't want to. Um, when I cut it, it will just be that cut, just like scuba material. If you cut it, it's not gonna fray, so um, I can either just have them with the raw edges, which I've actually seen in stores right now, um, a lot of the faux suede with like the raw edges, or I can bind off the edges with like a trim that I like, so I've got an entire drawer full, Ooh whip myself with my hand. Yeah. So I've got an entire um, drawer full of trim, uh, which I could definitely use some of it for that. So I'm really, really excited to kind of get stuck into this one. Um, but it's, a, it's at the back of a very long queue of things that I've got to make. So, but that is definitely what I'm looking at. And I have some other fabrics as well that would look really good as a duster, especially this long one. So I really want to get into this um, and hopefully hopefully my sewing skills are up to par and I take because sometimes I rush a little bit and it's a little bit shoddy work but when I'm actually taking my time I want to make it look as perfect as possible the goal is to make it look like it's been store-bought and not something that's been handmade I think people have this like a uh, vision of like if something's like handmade then it's not gonna look great um, and the whole point of being able to make something yourself is to and to like a professional capacity is to be able to basically replicate anything that you see in the shops. And sometimes when you look in the shops, like if you look inside your clothes that you bought from like, I don't know, Primark, I don't know, Quiz, some random place, you look inside and some of the stuff in there, some of the finishes are questionable. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot to make the insides and your seams and your stuff look very professional because it seems that some of the stuff out there on the high street isn't really up to par anyway. So, you know, just a little bit of time and patience, which is what I'm gonna do with this one. And you've got something that not only fits you perfectly, looks good and is to your style and specifications, it's probably gonna look better than anything that you could buy. And what more could we ask for? Not much more, right? So that's what I'm gonna do. Very, very excited about this. Okay, now I've gushed about that, trying to keep this quick. So let's talk about where I bought it, how much it cost, and how much I got. I picked up this fabric when I was last in Paris, which was about actually too long ago. I really wanna go back. Should we go back to Paris? Let's go back to Paris and do some more fabric shopping. Ah, I picked up this fabric in Paris and I absolutely love fabric shopping in Paris. I love their fabric shops. I just love like Paris in general. So it's just very Parisian and then it's like, it's right next to um, Sacre Coeur. Well, it's not that far away from Sacre Coeur. Um, so it's like, you can do a bit of sightseeing, have some lunch and then walk down the hill and then you've got this beautiful view just like, of like the huge church and then at the bottom of the hill you've got like all these crepe places and then all the fabric places it's amazing so you can really just make a day of it just in that montmartre area um but yes it's really really nice there uh i absolutely 
adore the stores and I also like that you can go inside and like pick up all your fabrics um, you get the expensive fabrics there but then they also have this thing called coupons and it's usually like outside or they'll have like coupon stores where it's all just like really cheap fabrics it's just like it's like all the markets I've been to were kind of like inside a lot of them are like remnants but a lot of them are still like on the roll it might just be like last season stuff or stuff it's really really like a fun shopping experience and they have so much there is so much like Paris is one of those fashion capitals so their fabric areas are like good there are a few like other markets and other fabric places in Paris but that is the place that I kind of always go to because it is the biggest they have the biggest stores there they've got it's like literally like streets and streets of just like fabric stores it's kind of like uh how gold hawk road is or kind of like how new york is and they have like a fashion block where like two or three streets have like a couple of shops going up here it's kind of like that but they're all very concentrated in one area definitely worth a visit if you ever go to paris you want to get yourself over to the montmartre area uh like you're going to see sacre coeur i'm pretty sure i'm saying this all wrong but like sacre coeur uh which is like a big like a uh, churchy dome thing which is like at the top of the hill if you go and see that first go have some fun take some pictures you can see the whole of paris then you walk all the way down the hill and when you get down to the bottom of the hill through the park right at the bottom are all the fabric shops and the crap places so grab yourself a pancake go buy some fabric so yeah that is pretty much my routine of every time that i've been to paris and i've been to paris a few times so i have three stores that i go to quite often but the one that i picked up this fabric from is called uh again my french not good it says uh tissu uh rien which is r-e-i-n-e -E, which i believe is rien rien so it's tissu rien i'm probably saying this terribly wrong but that is what it is they have like a big bit at the front where you can like get like loads of remnant stuff they have like old rolls and things like that and you can actually pick up a few cool things when you go inside that's where the magic is. They have two floors. Um, upstairs is mostly his, um, upholstery, but there are other fabrics up there, but all the fashion fabrics are mainly on the ground floor. And then they have these like cool little mannequins that are like a, I guess like quarter, quarter size. So you know you can get those little quarter size uh, dress mannequins. Somebody's obviously making little outfits and they put them on the mannequin and you can see all these cool little like dresses and outfits made with like different patterns and stuff out of the fabrics that are on the floor and it, it is very very cool um i have a vlog uh, of when i last went fabric shopping in paris last year in october i will link it below so you guys can go and have a look it shows you like the four my four favorite places that i go to you can actually see me buying this fabric and uh, talking about it afterwards in paris so i actually like think i made a day of it and went and had went for a little tour and stuff so you know check it out after this video of course if you want to see what it's actually like but it is a beautiful beautiful place um, a lot of fun and the prices are quite reasonable uh, like with any fabric store their prices are going to be competitive so you can shop around if you want but I do find that a lot of them have quite unique fabrics there are fabrics that everybody has but they all seem to hold fabrics that are unique to their store which is great so I got two and a half meters and I got that because at the time I thought I was going to be making a motorcycle jacket um, but I got too much just in case I changed my mind which is exactly what I did. I think with the two and a half meters I might be able to make the mid-length one. I don't know if it'll be enough to make a floor length one. I think I'll need quite a bit more, maybe three or more, four meters. So according to this pattern I'm going to need for the mid-length one, it was a 60 inch roll, uh, two and a half meters, two and a half meters on the dot. Wow, I'm gonna be cutting it fine. It's actually like just like a tad more than two and a half. And I believe that is because I need to make a tie. So I might have to make the tie out of something else, but wow, wow. So I'm cutting it very fine with this. But this pattern didn't exist before I bought this. So like, I was just seeing if I can make it fit. I can also go for this one, which is a little bit shorter. Yeah, that one I only need two meters for. So maybe I could make that one instead. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I picked this up a little while ago, but I do roughly remember how much it costs. Now, I do remember it being, it, I think it was like between seven and eight euros per meter because I thought, oh wow, that's actually quite cheap for like suede. But that's when I was like, it's obviously faux suede, but I think it was like 750 euros. 750 euros per meter 
for this faux suede and there was a lot of different colours and I think that's why I was like yeah okay fine I'll take 250 don't quote me on that though and I'm not sure if they'll still have it although I know that suede is always in fabric stores it just seems like because it's a good homeware type fabric as well it's good to make like chairs and stuff that have that like soft touch to it so I think you should always be able to find it if any of you viewers are out there in Paris go have a check I'm so sure that it was seven euros 50 a meter but I'm not 100% sure it's been a little while and I didn't write it down so I'm sorry let me know if you guys want to see me actually just constructing things because I can film that and put it together and it's almost like a sew along I'm happy to do that with you guys it doesn't always have to be like create your own pattern from scratch because it would actually help me as well because that means I can actually make stuff while on camera and we can just like do it together I can tell you the tools that you're gonna need uh, the pattern that you're gonna need and we can just make them together and then you can see what it looks like because uh, I'd really like to be able to make more of the stuff that I wear more often on camera and I'm sure you guys would like to be able to see it as well so that would definitely help me get through my list of stuff that I want to make um, because I can't create every pattern every time it's too time consuming um, so yeah but um, let me know what you think um, and yeah if you guys want to see more of that then I will happily go through it because there is a bra pattern which I've been dying to make make and uh, yeah I've just had to put it at the bottom of the pile because it's like I'm not making a DIY or I'm not doing like a haul or anything so if you guys want to see me actually like cut the pattern and put it together and see what happens whether I make a mistake or not and we'll just see if it was like a hit and miss like maybe we can trial some patterns and see what happens either way let me know what you guys think and I will happily take every comment into consideration so in summary this is my fabric it is a grey suede which is just delightful to stroke and I got two and a half meters I picked it up in a place called Tissurien which is in the Montmartre area of Paris where all the other fabrics shops are and I got it for seven euros fifty I'm gonna go with that it may be wrong and any other people um, any other Parisians out there Parisian sewists if you see this fabric and it's wrong just you know let me know in the comments because like I just don't remember but I do remember it being round about that so we're just gonna say it's round about that and it might be like up or down by a couple of euros but it definitely wasn't like more than 10 euros for sure i know that for sure because i probably would have been like nah you're okay so that's what i got guys uh that was fabric friday if you like this video give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button you know you want to and send me a comment i love hearing from you guys i'd love to know your thoughts on whether i should start trialing patterns and we can see together whether i can actually do them and what they look like in the end i'll see you guys in the next video happy friday